We want to continue to discuss these exponential models, but in this podcast, I want to focus on how we can create our own models. In the last podcast, which I can link to right here, I would suggest watching it because we went through an example where I said we started with $5 and I doubled my money every day. This is the formula that we got up top from the previous podcast. The amount of money was equal to the amount of money after a certain amount of days, let's say five days or six days or 12 days. It was equal to $5 and we were constantly multiplying that by two. All right. Remember an exponent is just telling you how many times you're multiplying by that particular base. So when we have 2 raised to the power of t, whatever number I plug in for t, that's telling you how many times 2 is going to be multiplied. So if I plug in 3, I would multiply 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. I would have 3 factors of 2. All right. So what we want to be able to do is to relate this to a very general formula which I have down below here. And I'm going to let you know what each one of these things are, but I'm going to relate it back to what we were talking about in our previous podcast. So the first unit here, P sub T, what is this equal to? Right. Well, in our example, that was equal to our money. Now, sometimes you might be talking about money. Sometimes you might be talking about the amount of bacteria, the amount of medication. But this little sub T is telling you this is the amount after a certain amount of time. So P sub T is the amount after time. So the amount after t time. So in our previous example, we used the letter m. Right? But for example, if I say, let's say p sub 5, what I would be saying is the amount of money, if I were talking about money, or the amount of bacteria, or the amount of milligrams of penicillin, whatever it might be, p sub 5 is the amount after five days or five weeks, whatever the unit of time is. You might be asking, why do we use the letter P? Well, that relates to population. So a lot of these models can be used to talk about the population of a city, population of a country. So really, this is the population after time T, but we're going to just generalize it as the amount after a particular amount of time. All right. P sub zero, this P sub zero in our previous example was five, you might be able to figure out that this represents the starting amount. So in our example, we were starting with five dollars. You will also hear this be called, uh, be called the initial, initial amount. So we started our initial amount on our day zero, at time zero, was five dollars. And then I multiplied it constantly by this factor here of two. I doubled it every day. Okay. R, in our example, is related to this power of, or excuse me, this multiple of two. I'm going to call this our rate, but I'm going to be careful when I use that. I'm going to put that in quotes. This is the rate that the initial amount is growing. And I'm putting that in quotes because it's not technically just this R that dictates how fast it's growing. So in our last example, we were doubling, and that had an R of two. So when we were talking about doubling, when we double our initial amount, we saw that R was equal to 2 because we were constantly multiplying by 2. So you have to look at the problem. Are you doubling your initial population? Is the bacteria being split in half after every week or after every hour? So whatever it's doing, doubling, tripling, splitting in half, multiplying by three-fourths, whatever it is, this is what you're going to be constantly multiplying because this is the factor, R, that's being raised to the exponent. This is what we're constantly multiplying by. T is the unit of time. So we could be talking about time in weeks, time in days, hours, minutes, but this is time. So if I said that the amount of money I have doubles after every five days. All right, time would be days. If it doubles every minute, then time would be minutes. So the R, the unit of R and the unit of T here, they will be together. However fast something is doubling will be the unit that we're going to discuss for T. And finally, this K. We haven't seen this. There's actually no value of K. There is a value of K, actually. It's just one in our previous example. So in our previous example, we had that k was equal to 1. I'm going to call this my 
in quotes, my for every factor. All right? Again, not very mathematical, but it allows us to get an idea of what's going on here with this value of k. In our previous example, we were doubling every single day, so every one day. So in our previous example, right, and I can write this up here, in our previous example, k was equal to 1 because we were doubling every day, every one day. If we were doubling our money every five days, k would be 5. And we're going to get into an example actually next to see why we have to divide by this quote-unquote for every factor. Here is an example that we want to model with an exponential no, equation. A bacteria culture triples every six hours. If there were seven cells to start with, how many cells should we expect to see 24 hours later? Now, we see that the question that's being asked is, how many cells should we expect to see after 24 hours? We are usually looking at a problem and trying to just answer that right away. But we cannot answer this question until we first get our model. So what I would suggest doing, all right, I know you're going to look at that question first when you read something. How many cells should we expect to see after 24 hours? And that's great. But you first need a model. Let's do that first. All right, here's the general form. We have the population after some time will equal the initial population times some rate raised to some power. <clears throat> so the ones that are pretty obvious here is usually you'll definitely know what you're starting with, P sub zero. So what are we starting with? The original population, that's told uh, to us that there were seven cells to start with. Right. Typically, actually always, I will say always, the ones that we will see in class, this P sub T, you will never be given that. That's what we're going to be looking for. We, know, we want to know the amount after some time, so you'll always you know, have that still as a variable. But you will also always be given the original amount, which we see here is 7. So we're starting with 7 cells. And what is the rate? What are we doing to these 7 cells? Are they doubling? Are they being cut in half? Are we multiplying by 7? And if you read carefully, it says that the bacteria culture triples. And if it's saying triples... That means from one unit of time to the next, we're going to be multiplying by 3. Now the question is, are we going to just put a t? All right, so will I just have a t? Now I want you to think about this. All right, well, first of all, what, what unit of time are we talking about? We're talking about it tripling every 6 hours. Immediately, as soon as you see that it's tripling every 6 hours, you know that time will be in hours. That's important to decipher. Now, this part right here is wrong. The time, just the regular old time. I'll tell you why. Right? Think about just plugging in 1. So when t is equal to 1, and you were to plug this in, you're claiming that after 1 hour, you're going to have 7 times 3 to the first power, which is 7 times 3. Notice when you're plugging in 1, you're claiming that this bacteria is automatically tripling, and that's only after 1 hour. We plugged in 1, but it doesn't triple every 1 hour. We're told that it's tripling every 6 hours. Right? Up here, we are told that it's tripling every 6 hours. So we don't actually, the first time we want to multiply by this 3. And this is kind of where this quote-unquote for every factor comes in. We don't want this to happen. We don't want to multiply our original population by 3 until we plug in what number? That's the question. Right? When will we actually first be multiplying by 3? Well, it's first going to triple after 6 hours. So what I want to happen is when I plug in 6, I want this to happen. When I plug in 6 in for t, I want to multiply by 3. That's why this part right here is incorrect, so I'm going to delete that. That's why our formula is going to look like this. P sub T will equal 7 times 3. And we're going to have our time, but it's going to be divided by 6. Our value of K that we have up here, K will equal 6 because we're talking about every 6 hours. So now let's see if this works and see why this works. 
So we want to know how many cells should we expect to see 24 hours later. What we're looking for is the population after 24 hours. So that will be 7 times 3, and we're going to have 24 in for t, and we're dividing that by 6. When you simplify that exponent, you'll have 7 times 3, and 24 divided by 6 is fourth power, to the fourth power. That should make sense. If this bacteria is tripling every 6 hours, 24 hours later, we want to know how many times 6 hours goes into that. All right, so think about this. Every 6 hours, you're walking to the back of the room, and you're coming back, and you're seeing that it tripled. So 24 hours later, you will have gone away and come back, and you would have multiplied by 3 4 times because 6 hours goes into 24 4 times. You're tripling, you're multiplying by 3 4 whole times. So when you simplify this, P sub 24 will equal, and you should put that whole thing right into your calculator. It's easier to, you could do it piece by piece, but it would make a little bit more sense just to plug everything into your calculator, 3 to the 4th power times 7, you should get 567. So 567 cells we should expect to see 24 hours later. Right. Now, what happens? In this particular example, we are told how many, we're looking for the number of cells. So we're plugging in, we're told uh, 24 hours later, we're given the time, that's what we're plugging in. In future examples, what we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for the time. In other words, we're going to be given, we're going to be given the population, and we want to know how long did it take in order to get to that amount. So let's take this same example to the next slide and solve it using guess and check. We're not always going to solve it using a guess and check method, but we are going to on the next page just so I can illustrate you know, what we're doing exactly. On this slide, we're using the same exponential model, but we have a different question. We're told the same bacteria triples every six hours, same thing. If there were seven cells to start with, how long would it take until we have 15,309 cells? Notice in the last example, I wanted to know the amount of cells. So that was the variable that was left blank. Now, what I don't know is the time. I want to know how long. So basically, I want to solve for this value of t. I want to solve for what t is. I know what this ending value is. This ending value, and let me write this down here. The ending value is 15,309. And I want to know when my model, when my, my function over here, 7 times 3 to the t divided by 6, I want to know when this side is equal to 15,309. Now this is different than everything we've seen so far in this semester. The reason why, usually when we solve for a variable, we have a way to get the variable by itself. However, the variable is now up top here as an exponent. And right now, we don't know how to get that exponent out. I will create some podcasts that go over logarithms, which do allow us to get that variable out of that exponent. But right now, we have no way of getting that variable out. So what I'm going to do is a guess and check method. In other words, I want to know what values of t will cause this side to equal 15,309. So I'm going to plug some values in. I'm going to plug in, and I already chose some values over here. I'm going to plug in 30. After 30 hours, how many cells are there? So when t is equal to 30, I plug that into my formula here, 7 times 3, and make, making sure when you do the exponent, you're putting this in parentheses, and you get 1,701 cells. That's obviously not quite enough. So I decide to jump up to 40. Let's plug in 40. When I plug in 40, I have my exponent now as 40 divided by 6, and I actually get a decimal. And the reason why I get a decimal is because I have, as my exponent, the amount of hours isn't a multiple of 6. In other words, it's not going to completely be tripled. You know, 30, that tells us, you know, when you simplify 30 divided by 6, that's tripling 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is how many times you're going to multiply by 3. 
but 40 divided by 6, that's going to have a decimal. So you're not actually one whole time, you're not actually tripling uh, one whole time, but only partly. All right? And that's okay. We have approximately, if we were to estimate, we would have approximately 10,615, if we wanted to round, after 40 hours. That's not quite right. So what we do is I just plug in one more hour. I plug that in. I get 12,747.5. That's not quite right. So I decide to plug in 42. And I find that after 42 hours, when I plug this into for T, 42 hours later, I find that I get 15,309. I get this right side of this equation equal to the left side, what I was looking for. So my solution is T equal to 42 or 42 hours. So 42 hours later, I will have that amount. All right, let me just summarize a few things here. We saw in this entire podcast that we could model particular situations with an exponential model, with an exponential function. Now, you, the first thing you want to be able to do is to actually model that situation. I know our brains are going to go right to this last sentence, all right, how long would it take? Or in the last example, it was, you know, how many cells would we have after a certain amount of hours? I know we want to jump right to the question that's being asked, but before we can answer any question at all, we have to set up our model. So before you answer the hows or the whys or the when type of questions, look before that. Look before that because that's the information you're going to need up here before the actual how question is asked. This is the information that we're going to need in order to solve for that question. And we're going to have the initial amount, 7. We're told it's tripling. That's our rate. And the every factor. It's happening every 6 hours. So that's what we're going to be dividing our unit of time into. So once we actually have our model, which we have up here, now we can look at the question that's being asked. How long would it take? They're asking for what value of t. I don't know that value of t. I need to solve for that value of t when my population after a particular time is 15,309. So what I would have to do right in this particular slide, what we decided to do was we tried a guess and check model. We plugged in 30, we plugged in 40, that wasn't it, 41, and we finally plugged in 42. Now I knew that it was going to be around these numbers because that's how I created this problem. However, if you're given a problem like this and you have to guess and check, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to think about where you have to start. It could be that something happens, you know, every something doubles every two minutes, every three minutes, and you're getting up into 1,000 minutes later, uh, 2,000 minutes later. You don't want to have to guess and check up to that amount. So our goal in this particular example and moving on is to be able to solve this equation without guess and check. In other words, how can we get this exponent down?